And my name is Stan Teuling, student at Tilburg University. And today I'm vis visiting a, a very special company. I have the honor to kick off this first session. And uh, yeah, let's kick it off. I'm sitting in a, a, maybe a familiar vehicle. You might have seen these little carts driving around uh, your neighborhood, delivering food at your doorstep, or maybe even on the news. Since 2015, Picnic expanded their operations from four to over a thousand of these carts. Today, I will be driving around with Thomas Elders, who's sitting next to me. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Thomas. Alumnus of Tilburg University, but also currently a business developer uh, of Picnic. Um, together, we'll gain some insights uh, about Picnic's booming business, their journey uh, from startup to established name, and all what is to come. So, so Thomas, uh, we're driving here around Amsterdam. How did you experience your time as a student in Tilburg? Um, I had a fantastic time in Tilburg. I studied econometrics. Uh, I did a master's in uh, quantitative finance and actuarial sciences. So uh, no, I loved the gezelligheid in, uh, in Brabant. Uh, I loved uh, going to uh, the Philip. I'm not sure if that's cool anymore. It's, it's but still uh, exists. It's it still, still exists. exists. Maybe yeah. there are new venues that are much cooler than uh, than the Philip and the Bolle, but uh, I sometimes uh, look back to my uh, time at studies with uh, some uh, nostalgia. Could you maybe explain what Picnic does in, in a few sentences? Sure. So uh, Picnic is the uh, online supermarket solution of, uh, of Europe, I would say. Um, we deliver groceries uh, for free um, right. at the lowest price, um, minute precise at the door of our customers. Uh, and it's a full range of groceries uh, that you have in your pocket with your app. Um, and if uh, once you have ordered, um, you can follow your delivery. Like uh, you also, for example, on a, with Uber, you can follow the delivery. Uh, you have a delivery radar, as we call it, and you follow the van we're sitting in right now. And you know at the minute precise uh, when your groceries will, groceries will be uh, will be delivered. All right, that seems uh, very nice, especially free free delivery and uh, at a low cost. Um, I could imagine that uh, some of the the, the viewers uh, don't know Picnic by heart or your process by heart. So could you maybe also explain what goes on behind the screens of Picnic? What goes on from from the, uh, from order to delivery? What happens? Yeah, so um, that all sounds quite easy like uh, okay we are going to offer our customers uh, a service where we uh, uh, don't charge any delivery fees uh, at the lowest price uh, but that of course in the back uh, comes with um, a lot of uh, with, a, with a supply chain which is has to be very 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 efficient if you compare uh, our model to that of uh, traditional grocers um, then they all have more what you would say uh, a premium service so they charge a delivery fee and they see delivering uh, the groceries as an extra an additional yeah, service uh, to uh, um, to the store uh, and that's also they they've add on basically that uh, delivery to uh, the infrastructure they already had so uh, the founders of picnic uh, they completely redesigned the full uh, uh, supply chain uh, without any uh, stores uh, and, uh, uh, and legacy uh, in order to be able to, on an economically viable basis, uh, uh, deliver this to, uh, to our customers. Um, so we have, for example, fulfillment centers uh, where uh, we receive the goods from our suppliers, where the orders are picked for, uh, for our customers. So you could say that's basically what a customer is doing themselves in a supermarket. Yeah. Um, so maybe one step back, a supermarket uh, is basically a self-service model. So the service grade of a, of a, of a, of a supermarket is actually very low. Uh, you have to go there, uh, you have to go through this maze of uh, shelves, every time uh, picking the same things, uh, your same milk cart, your same uh, shopping uh, clothing, for example, can be yeah. fun. Uh, but uh, shopping groceries, yeah, it's in our habit uh, at a supermarket and that model that evolved in uh, the 70s uh, with a very big range of, uh, of um, uh, goods and also uh, uh, at a very low price compared to the uh, smaller stores you had before. Um, but you also had uh, the milkman uh, and the milkman uh, had a fantastic service. It was a smaller range of, uh, of products. Uh, and it was maybe a little bit more uh, expensive, but um, 
they uh, drive around uh, and everyone knew when the milkman was at the door. So then supermarkets emerged and which pushed away the, the, the milkman, milkman because uh, of the much bigger range of choice in products. Um, and, uh, and, and, and they, they competed in price, so which was uh, very difficult to, uh, to match for the, right. for the milkman. And what uh, Picnic is, is basically the modern milkman. So with, in modern times, with technology, uh, we can deliver that same service with very friendly uh, delivery boys and girls, uh, with the hospitality mind. So basically... Uh, service is key. Service is key, the type of person you will meet in a, in a restaurant or, or a bar. Uh, with a smile on their face, they deliver your groceries. Uh, uh, with the same service level as the milkman, but also with a huge, the same range uh, of products as a supermarket and also uh, at the lowest price. Um, and that sets us apart from our competitors uh, and that makes this a mass market proposition. So it's a proposition for the mass. Right. There's a lot of dare in, uh, in what the picnic uh, has done uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the past years. And uh, that's also the entrepreneurship, I think, of the founders that they yeah. did a lot of research. So it's not uh, something that uh, they had an idea overnight and started it uh, the day after. They did a lot of research and they uh, visited uh, basically all types of delivery uh, models, the postman, uh, parcel uh, delivery services. So they, they and, and really studied what uh, drives their efficiency uh, and uh, how that works. Uh, did a lot of uh, research on, uh, on supermarkets. They had no background in yeah. how to run uh, a supermarket. So, so if I understand correctly, Picnic is a totally new concept. It, it prices itself and distinguishes itself with, with service levels and also efficiency. Uh, yeah. So um, that about Picnic. And then about yourself. So you, you told me that you're a, a business developer within Picnic. What, what is your role? What does a business developer, especially in such a, such a new company, what, what do you do? So on my a daily basis? On or? a daily basis, yeah. So it's quite diverse, but our team uh, is responsible for the, the business planning and the, the strategic direction we're going as a company. Uh, and that's uh, on the short term, so uh, the whole full let's say, call it budgeting process uh, for uh, the one year horizon, but also the 10 and the 15 year horizon. Yeah. We have to think really far ahead because building this company and building out the infrastructure has uh, quite lengthy lead times. So you really have to plan ahead. Um, and that's, uh, that's one of our key responsibilities. Uh, next to that, uh, we're also responsible for raising uh, arranging the, the, the funding of the company. So making sure we have enough cash uh, to, to do all this. Uh, and it can be uh, raising debt uh, with banks or um, raising equity with, uh, with investors. So quite an important position then, especially in a growing company, you of course need funding for all sorts of projects, for these cards, for, uh, for new warehouses to hire new people. Ah. Exactly, it's, uh, well, you could say it's your license to operate. If yeah. the funding stops, then at some point. <laughs> so, I know that you you weren't there for the first first years then, but but maybe you've heard some things. Could you maybe take us sure. along in the in the first year or the first two years of picnic funding wise, starting up a new business, growing? Yeah. So uh, what I mentioned uh, is that the founders with a very small team um, did quite some extensive research before they actually launched the service and did the first delivery. So that took yeah. a couple of years to really reinvent the uh, delivery model. So we yeah. say uh, at a certain time and a certain day, we're, we'll be in your street. Do you want us to deliver your groceries? Um, and that's one or uh, uh, now also two time slots uh, a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, on Monday that will be at uh, at four, and on Tuesday will be at five, and on uh, Wednesday will be at uh, at six. Um, so typically, there's always one day that suits the schedule for our customers. Yeah. But it's very different from uh, a, com a competition uh, that offer 10, 12 time slots or even more on a day, but with quite um, broad slots, so uh, wide slots. So yeah. what I mean by that is that they say, okay, two, maybe some, sometimes five hours. Yeah. Uh, so you're not really certain when they, uh, they will arrive. 
Um, and that milkman round is very efficient for us because the more customers we uh, have um, that we can deliver in a street, uh, at some point we don't even have to drive between the, we just drive to a street and we deliver all the customers in that street and then we can drive back. And it also makes our service extremely reliable. Uh, and efficient, once again the efficiency comes in. Yes, so it's, it, it, it cuts on both ways. So it's, yeah. it is efficient, uh, so that's uh, good for picnic, but in the end also good for, for the customer of course, because that's why we can uh, deliver for free uh, for the lowest price. Uh, and it's also um, uh, makes our service so reliable. And especially in, with, with shopping groceries, which is basically really a habit type of thing. So mm -hmm. uh, people are creatures of habit. Um, and uh, somehow they have developed the habit of going to a supermarket. And that's sometimes difficult to cut through. But we see that every, so once a customer joins Picnic, they, and they have tried the service out and they like it, they stay forever. Our retention is something, every time I, I, we show that to investors or, 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 or anyone basically, uh, it's, uh, they, they, they don't want anything they're else blown away. Yeah. They're, they're blown away um, without any subscription. Service, efficiency, price, and they don't want to leave anymore. I they can, don't I can get it. Yeah. How do you, because a lot of the viewers might be wanting to start their, their own company as well, how do you acquire finances? Was it completely financed by, by, the, by the starting, uh, by, so the, by the staff? I or? think the beauty of, of Picnic is that um, the cost of experimenting and piloting is very low. So Picnic started in Amersfoort yeah. with a hub, you've seen it. It's basically yeah. a small parking place. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> you, you compared it to a parking garage and it really is. Basically, it's it's a it's bunch that. of carts, yeah. a few crates. Very different yeah. to uh, uh, renting a very expensive a uh, piece of real estate uh, in the uh, city center for, uh, for a supermarket yeah. um, and having, having to do to, to, to the full fit out of that supermarket. Um, so, uh, and a couple of, uh, of vehicles. Uh, and then, uh, 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 and a small warehouse, very small warehouse. That's, that's how it all started. And that do doesn't require a lot of funding. Uh, and then, uh, so the, the, the cost of experimentation in this model is really uh, really low and we can uh, so we can also in that experiment in, in 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 new countries but also in new types of services we we are very and that, that i think that's very different from a corporate which uh, typically it takes quite some time uh, to get something implemented implemented and approved we just uh, start trying it out and see if it works right. uh, if it does work we we stop immediately it works, it makes yeah, sense. We, can roll, we can roll it out. And the cost of the, doing that is, is, is relatively low. All right. Um, yeah. So um, was that, because you, you just indicated that you started in Amersfoort, uh, relatively small with a small hub, was that, was that also uh, how you evaluate, val validated your business model or, or your concept? Was it just starting out and seeing whether people liked it? So um, that's a good question. The founders also, in that, that lengthy uh, research uh, time and really developing that, that, that model and, and, for example, also developing this, this vehicle. Mm -hmm. This vehicle is fully developed by, by Picnic uh, and uh, is, is one of the great assets of Picnic because it it's, um, enables us to, to uh, uh, make this efficient delivery and has quite a, a, a a short time that we spend at the customer. We could spend at the customer's door, but not at the, the, the vehicle at the customer. So the stop time is very short uh, because we can enter it from outside. But, but how did you, because, because the concept seems to work now, but how did you validate at that point in time that the Netherlands, maybe even Amersfoort and the yeah. Dutch customer were ready for, for groceries at their door in, in a milkman way, but with a new, yeah. in, a, in a new, Four. No, very good question. So um, um, the idea of Picnic started with um, the observation that a lot of categories were transitioning to online. So customers were buying electronics, uh, books, etc., all uh, online, mm -hmm. but they weren't buying um, food online. Yeah. Um, another observation was that the category of food of groceries is as large as all the categories combined. 
the other categories so it's combined. A, it's a, a so the huge market to enter. Uh, it's a huge, huge market opportunity. Um, so it's very interesting to to uh, dive in. What was the reason that only at that point in time one percent of uh, uh, groceries was bought uh, bought online? One percent. Only one percent. Yeah. And, and do you have a an indication what it is now? It's now uh, roughly six percent. So, so we have grown that market. Uh, considering the market is quite big, uh, an and increase of five percent is uh, is good. Yeah, okay. that market is a forty billion market. So, wow. Uh, so um, we were talking about the validation of, of your business model or of the yes. concept. How did you figure out that that Amersfoort, the, the Netherlands in general, but also the Dutch customer, that they were ready for picnic? Yeah. So I talked about the observation of the founders uh, that um, the market of um, Groceries is as big as the market of uh, all other consumer categories combined yeah. for the billion market. So that's uh, that's quite big, and so it is a in very interesting opportunity to look at why are people at that point in time or w why weren't they buying the groceries online? And they found out that uh, one of the reasons was uh, basically price. So that every uh, other uh, model out there was a premium model. And they they, uh, they all had to pay extra for service they had delivery. To pay extra for the delivery. Um, so uh, that was a huge, uh, and also um, reliability and uh, and service. So this only works um, if you if you're sure when your uh, your, your groceries are uh, being delivered. It's different than. Uh, Sending out uh, your parcel from uh, yeah, you need your uh, your dinner on time, of course, and kids need to eat for breakfast before school. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Exactly, and you need to be at home. Yeah. Uh, that's also quite an important, uh, and that's very different from uh, delivering uh, a TV or a yeah. or a book. All right. So after a lot of market research, you validated that th the market was big enough to enter, even if you could grasp already a, a small bit, it, it would work. Yeah. And um, then you managed to, to grow with Picnic the market for online grocery deliveries from 1 to 6%. So in five, a little bit over five years. Yeah, so the full, mar the full market is, has grown to, to, uh, yeah. to 6%. Um, and there's one other thing that uh, the founders and that, that initial group of Picnickers uh, did, and that was they held uh, town hall meetings. So they did a lot of uh, meetings with potential customers, uh, wow. town halls, uh, they called it, uh, where they really validated and interviewed them on what would you like uh, for such a service and when, what is needed uh, for you to, to, to use such a service. Um, so that was also a very important uh, element of basically validating uh, uh, if there's demand for this. So, by now you have been working and operating for, for six years, yourself included, for two and a half. Um, would you, from your own personal opinion of course, would you already say that Picnic is a success? Well, I think uh, from um, the first day in Amersfoort, uh, from the first announcement basically that was Picnic uh, was going to deliver, the demand was really overwhelming. So. Uh, in Amersfoort, it was just only that small hub and a uh, very tiny warehouse at, at the moment. But uh, already from the whole country, everybody yeah. subscribed right. uh, when it was announced. Um, so uh, from day one, it uh, it's really a, it has been a, a very big success. Uh, nobody imagined that within uh, five years, uh, Picnic uh, will grow to, has grown to, uh, to a business of, uh, of 500 million. Um, so, be, because that's what your 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 revenues are at the moment, 500 million euros per year. Per year? Yeah. Wow. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's unicorn status for uh, for a startup. In five years, towards such a, such a big revenue number is is re really amazes me. So we've now talked about Picnic as a company working there, uh, but maybe. Also interesting, uh, a lot of our listeners or viewers uh, might be interested in starting their own company as well. So yeah. I would like to know from you how it's like working for a startup and contributing to such a new concept. 
Um, and first, I would like to ask, maybe you indicated that you worked at Rabobank for quite a long time, eight years. Mm -hmm. and, and what made you decide to leave that maybe even comfortable position and yeah. start something new? Yeah, so maybe a bit cliche, but I read the, the, the book of Elon Musk. <laughs> And uh, I thought, okay, um, I'm indeed a bit of my in a, in a comfortable position here. I could do this for another five years. But I was really inspired by that story uh, from building something completely new that di that didn't exist, and was really tangible uh, because uh, what I did uh, was relatively abstract uh, at, uh, at at Rabobank. Uh, and I wanted to work uh, on, on, on really building something, something new. Um, and then uh, I saw an, uh, an ad on LinkedIn, uh, uh, Picnic. Um, and I was, that immediately caught my eye. And I, I, I had heard about Picnic, but I didn't knew that much about it yet. And uh, once I, uh, yeah, I started to look at uh, videos uh, on YouTube. Uh, I was I was getting more and more excited, and and after my first interview, I was uh, bouncing back and forth. Okay, this this is what I want to do. Uh, it's such an energetic uh, company, uh, very different from uh, a big corporate. There's uh, a lot of lot of possibilities. Basically, everyone who has an ID is welcome to work that out and try it out. Uh, doesn't really. This even doesn't really matter if it's close to what your the team you are and what the team you, if it's a good idea uh, then uh, yeah start uh, start doing it. So you you could even say that so you you wanted to contribute to something new and want, face a new challenge and within picnic everyone can actually be an entrepreneur within a within a bigger yeah. startup within a bigger company. I think that everyone within picnic uh, gets a sense of what it it is to be an entrepreneur. Wow, okay, that's, um, that's yeah, really nice definitely. actually. Definitely, and you get a lot of autonomy. It's very different um, yeah, from, from working at a big, big corporate. Uh, there's not much hierarchy. Uh, when I joined, uh, there weren't even team leads, uh, uh, managers. Um, that changed, we do have team leads now because you need coordination, but yeah. those are, it's not that you, uh, that's everyone wants to be the team lead. Yeah. It's not seen as a better position than a specialist in a certain area. It's seen as, okay, this person is very good in, in coordinating a team uh, and, and leading that team. Well, then uh, that's uh, a, a very good job to have, but it's not a better position than, uh, than being a specialist. And everyone works also with the founders. So uh, the founders... Uh, Do they drive these cards as well? The founders, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes they, they do delivery rounds. Definitely, we have this uh, at Christmas uh, and uh, busy times. Uh, as a head office, we uh, typically uh, tend to help uh, the operation. Also, always good to to see the operation. Um, very down to earth. Then very down to earth. They uh, join the customer service, uh, answer uh, questions from from our customers, um, but and they, and they work. Um, very yeah, in the same way with uh, with our employees who just uh, uh, were just coming from university mm -hmm. have no experience uh, as with someone with has 15 year work experience. If someone is smart and bright and has uh, the right ideas, they love to work with them. And uh, very so nice, very nice to hear. That's very nice. So uh, from what what we've heard right now, Picnic is a really low barrier company uh, with a nice uh, company culture. You've you've been operating for a little over five years now already. It's it's also good to to take a look at the future. So sure. uh, let's take the last part of this this journey of our drive towards uh, going a bit into the future of Picnic. Uh, the grocery market is of course very big. You already mentioned it, but it's also very fought over. Um, and there are of course already some big established name uh, in the names in the in the grocery market your concept is new as you mentioned very new uh, but also well, five years, five relates years old now, but, but but new new as in a refreshing and right, a, yeah, a, yeah, a right. unique concept yeah but also it relates a bit to the milk pan um, so what is your 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 future strategy but what is your value proposition and why do you think that you as picnic are here to stay 
um, as of today, we're still the only one uh, in the world that offers this proposition to customers. So no delivery fee, the lowest price, you only have to uh, minimum order value of uh, only 35 euros. Uh, and there's no one else yet uh, that offers this. Um, so we have still a huge um, market to tap. Uh, and uh, we can expand uh, beyond all the countries we are now already active, so Germany and, uh, and the Netherlands. Um, and but we also we have built a very efficient home delivery system. Uh, so it's not only about groceries. Uh, we can deliver all sort of stuff in the long run. Uh, what we're already doing now is that we're taking back uh, parcels. So if you're sending back uh, a book or something else to a, to a web shop, you can give that to uh, the runner uh, at your door uh, once they deliver your uh, your groceries. And um, so it will it will not stop at uh, at groceries. Uh, and there are so many things that we still can do. Um, and so the, the opportunity is is really, really, uh, really, really big. Um, so and, and we had, of course, also some tailwind from uh, headwind, no tailwind, <laughs> from uh, from Corona. Yeah, uh, you're, you're taking the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you see that that online grocery shopping is really at an inflection point, and you see uh, we we have to and 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 our biggest challenge actually uh, is to uh, find uh, and hire enough people to cater for for the demand we have so uh, in order to, uh, to to cater for the demand we, we're currently having we have to hire around thousand people a month uh, that's uh, that's a lot what I also say is, says something about yeah. the, the growth uh, yeah definitely the growth rates uh, at the moment uh, but that's uh, one of the biggest challenges but we we're, we're we're managing that and uh, so I don't think there's a uh, there's lot that stands in our way at the moment. All right, great to hear. So um, indeed, I wanted to ask about COVID, but you, you already mentioned that, of course, is a bit of a, a tailwind. Do you think that, that after uh, everything returns to the way it used to be, or, or at least so in some way, shape or form, that you will see your, your sales decrease? Do will, will people go back to the regular supermarket or will they stay with Picnic? Um, I don't think I don't think that will decrease uh, with a with a big uh, big step. Uh, and the reason is that, as I mentioned before, uh, people are really creatures of habit. And uh, once they've tried out the service, also before uh, Corona, they tend to to stick with that. Yeah. But right. they have a habit of going to supermarkets because that's there's the there was no other alternative even exactly. And now. But it's it's the step trying out the service, uh, and then we see that uh, our customers tend to stay forever. All right. So, actually, one one thing that rests me to to ask is, um, what is the the future for Picnic gonna look like? You mentioned uh, a thousand uh, employees, new employees each month, already a five hundred million euro revenue each year. What is the limit? It, is is there a limit? No, I don't think there's a limit. I think uh, it will stop with at uh, world domination. <laughs> um, is that is that the goal as well? Is is like oh, expansion towards other countries? You're definitely, yeah, yeah. So we have seen that this uh, idea travels. So uh, it works very well, uh, really well in the Netherlands, but it also works extremely well in in Germany and. Uh, because you are in Germany, right? We are also active in Germany, and uh, the growth rates in Germany are even uh, higher than that in uh, in the Netherlands, uh, and that's very encouraging. Uh, also, because of the fact that um, basically the Netherlands and Germany, you could say that, that those are the the hardest markets because um, food prices in uh, in these two countries are extremely low if you compare it to other European countries. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, to expand that to other countries and what's also very encouraging 
is the fact that every city, but also every country we, we uh, launch, uh, we see basically exactly the same adoption by, by customers. So it's a very forecastable model. Uh, and uh, we, we really know that it works. And we don't do a lot of marketing. Basically, these vehicles itself are our marketing. <laughs> they, <laughs> stick the flywheel. they stick out. They yeah. stick out, yeah. So um, that's maybe a good one, uh, one to end on. Uh, Picnic is definitely here to stay. Uh, a young company still, but already with a, with a huge arsenal of carts, uh, a lot of customers, uh, and of course also employees who love working for the company. I enjoyed my time uh, with you uh, and here in Amsterdam a lot today, Thomas, so thanks a lot for inviting me. Me as well. Thanks a lot, and uh, yeah, this well. was the first episode of uh, Venture Vis Visionaries. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, on to the next episode, I would say. Thanks for visiting, Stan. Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, good afternoon to the first edition of Venture Visionaries. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, welcome, all, uh, welcome you all here, sorry. Um, first of all, I would uh, like to welcome Thomas Zelders as well. I don't know if he is here. Yes, I am, hi Ron. All right, welcome. Um, also, uh, I hope you really enjoy the video of Tom, uh, Thomas and Stan. Um, we put a lot of effort in it. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, you enjoyed yourself. Um, so this, this last 15 minutes, uh, we will uh, just ask some additional questions that came in after the recording of the video. Um, just some more questions that were not uh, completely uh, clear uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning of the, of the video or at the beginning of the event. Um, so the first one is uh, about the business model. Uh, we had some more questions about the uh, validation of the business model, uh, and especially uh, for Thomas then, uh, how did you... Um, Come across the, the the problems that you came uh, that you that you uh, faced with this business model. Did you uh, have to encounter or did you um, uh, have any uh, mistakes during this uh, during this whole uh, adventure? That uh, looking back at it were um, yeah prevented very easily. But uh, yeah, that's only looking back at it. Yeah, no, I think uh, great question. Um... I think we made plenty of mistakes. And I think, uh, to be honest, that every growing company and, and especially startups and, 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 and scale-ups uh, is very important to make mistakes. Otherwise, you're not at the edge of the growth and the, and the edge of your capabilities. Uh, the most important thing is to don't make mistakes that are detrimental for your existence or for or, or very... Uh, impactful on your customers, of course. Uh, so you really need to make sure that uh, the, the, you, you, you mitigate the large risks. But in experimentation and, and trying out new things, uh, we definitely uh, have made a lot of mistakes uh, on the way. Uh, and I think the key thing to focus on uh, when you make a mistake is, of, co of course, uh, to learn from, from them and not make them uh, a second time. So we have um, uh, automated a sort of uh, incident system um, and, uh, the, uh, and, and also make post-mortems, uh, how it's called. So we make a, a quite an uh, elaborate evaluation uh, once an incident uh, happens. And uh, so what happened and how can we prevent it the next time? So were there also issues that came uh, came back a lot of times, even now, that were also there in the beginning, or are they all filtered out now? Um, no, I think the, so. Every we are still trying out new things, but the the like the basics and the foundation of our model, uh, I think we have a very good. Um, uh, 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 we have we have filtered out most of those those things uh, uh, in the in the in the last five years, uh, but still something happens like the snowstorm uh, of uh, <laughs> of of a month ago, uh, and that's uh, uh, we now have uh, um, processes in place, of course, how to deal with that. Uh, but still, um, we learn from those things, and next time we hope to do it even better than than, than this time. All right. Um, maybe also adding to that um, on the social component of a business model. Um, 
how did you contribute to the uh, to the food waste problem? Yeah, so uh, interesting that you ask. So that is something uh, we don't carry out, uh, in my view, uh, a lot uh, from Picnic, that we are also very sustainable, uh, actually at the core of our model. Uh, and what I think is, is great in that sense is that uh, sustainability goes hand in hand also with efficiency here. So uh, we drive fully electric vehicles, zero, zero emission. But as you mentioned, we also um, prevent a lot of food, food waste. Uh, and that's because we only order at our suppliers once we receive an order from our customers. Uh, so we don't have to throw out uh, bread, uh, for example, uh, or other fresh goods at the end of the day uh, because we didn't sell them. Um, and that's, uh, uh, that's uh, the big difference. So we save uh, close to 90% of food waste and everything, uh, if there's a little bit of additional stock that we otherwise have to throw away because it's, uh, beyond, it's getting beyond the best before date, uh, then we use that in our canteen. Um, so uh, we use basically every food and we don't throw away any food. Oh, that's very good to hear. Uh, yeah, that was uh, about the business model. Uh, then we received a new question, uh, which is what was your first marketing strategy or platform as businesses, as business to consumer is always tricky as people say. So what were the, uh, what were the platforms uh, for direct to consumer? Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, so we used uh, Facebook, uh, Google search. Uh, so, so basically uh, online advertising, very targeted advertising, uh, because uh, especially in the beginning, we weren't that active in that many reason, uh, uh, regions yet. Uh, so you, uh, it's not really helpful to do a TV uh, ad, for example, <laughs> if you're only active in, uh, in, Ar in Armsport, uh, because that's quite expensive and you're reaching a lot of uh, potential customers that cannot order yet. Um, so we do uh, uh, quite some, uh, we did uh, targeted uh, advertising, but uh, as I also said in the, in the video, our marketing is, uh, is relatively uh, low because um, we do, once we launch in a city, we do uh, some marketing to get that flywheel going uh, and get uh, the first customers in. Uh, but once People see uh, the vehicles drive around the city. There is awareness, and that's basically the most important thing, uh, that there's awareness. And uh, then uh, the conversion to, to register and to conversion to buy, uh, we don't need a lot of marketing for that, actually. All right. I hope that uh, answers your question. Um, then uh, going on with the, uh, with the other questions that we had before the... Uh this live session started. Um, yeah. Still about the, the funding. Uh, so you said that uh, it started with, uh, yeah, it didn't cost a lot of money to start from a parking lot in Ams uh, Amersfoort. Yeah. Um, that it was a lot of research uh, prior to, uh, to starting Picnic. But um, yeah, how did you handle the funding uh, maybe in the previous years and now that you are expanding uh, onto new markets? Yeah, good question. So um, we raised, uh, 100 million in funding in uh, 2017 uh, from um, from large families, uh, uh, from wealthy families in the, in the Netherlands. Uh, so uh, strategic investors, uh, long-term investors, very important for us. Um, and we also raised another 200 million uh, in 2019. And um, I would say in raising funding, the most important element is having uh, a very, very solid business plan. Um, and what I mean by that is that uh, you need to have calculated and modeled out uh, the future uh, in a very detailed way. Uh, so we have a model that uh, also even up till uh, the, the amount, the, the, the number of plastic bags or the number of ice packs, all these small items we uh, forecast uh, and, we and we are very accurate at the moment in forecasting uh, our business in terms of profit profitability, revenue, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, uh, uh, of course, gives a lot of comfort to uh, potential investors. Yeah. Were there also moments that you uh, under, 
underproduced or under ordered uh, any of the products that you had to uh, yeah, use for the for the sale of any of the products? Um, sure. Um, I think uh, um, a very important element is uh, completeness and availability. So for our customers, and that's and that's also, I think, how we distinct from our competitors that we have extremely high. Uh, service levels there so it's of course if you order your groceries online you don't want uh, an important ingredient from your for your for your meal missing because uh, uh, then you have to go to the store anyway uh, so that is uh, very key in our model uh, and we're reaching uh, very high uh, in completeness rates uh, but of course in some imp more unpredictable times such as uh, Christmas, uh, then uh, it is a bit harder to estimate uh, what, the, what the demand will be for a certain item. But we use uh, a lot of different forecasting models, including AI models, uh, to really forecast uh, on an item basis how much uh, uh, demand uh, uh, we'll have. And in the end, uh, that's still a very small part of uh, what we sell because the majority, what I mentioned before also in terms of food waste, we only uh, order once we get the order from our uh, customer in. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I can imagine that uh, during Christmas time, it's uh, very hard to, uh, to in have an indication. Um, so we have another question. Um, uh, so because of Corona, a lot of people were uh, scared to go to the supermarket or to the grocery store. And did Picnic do anything market-wise to play on this trend? Or did you do the same thing as you did before? Um, now, in terms of marketing, uh, we didn't do anything else. I think our service was, we were, in that sense, um, lucky uh, that we had this proposition already going and this uh, system and that we could help our customers uh, in, uh, in uh, not having to take the risk to go to, to a store. Um, what we did do, for example, is that we make, made priority for uh, people who worked in, the, in healthcare, for example, uh, uh, and elderly, uh, such that uh, they had a priority uh, on, uh, in order, ordering with us. So um, that's very that's good. To do. That's uh, also very societal to do. Um, so traditionally, people spend a lot of money uh, spontaneously when they walk in the store and they see, for example, a chocolate bar or something. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, they buy it at that moment. Does it also affect your uh, business model or how you have sales? Yeah, that's interesting. So there are quite some uh, possibilities there, but we also have to be careful that for us, it's most important that we that our customers buy things uh, at our store that they uh, would like to buy. Uh, buy. Um, um, but there are possibilities in the app, like also in your Spotify app or your Netflix app, of course, to uh, promote uh, some uh, uh, some products. And we we are also we are also everyone who opens the app sees a different app uh, because it's tailor made to the um, to the customer itself and what's the and the needs of the customer and what the what the customer bought before. So do you also have like temporal? Um... Um, promotions for people that most often buy chocolate once in a week or something that you give them an extra promotion for the, the chocolate bar yeah. from another brand or something? Definitely, yeah. You get uh, promotions in your email that you can uh, also sometimes choose which promotion do you want. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think um, we have time for one last question. Uh, it's already a, a quarter uh, to four. Um, so the I'm last blessed. question that we had was uh, if there are any possibilities for uh, graduate or internships uh, for university and HBO or HBO uh, students to join uh, to join Picnic. Yes, most definitely. So uh, please look uh, at our website. Uh, we have a lot of vacancies. Um, so uh, you're all happy to, uh, uh, to to look at that, and we're and very much invited to, invited to. Uh, uh, to go there and uh, uh, and apply. Um, also, uh, in terms of uh, internships, uh, definitely. So, uh, and that's very broad. So that can be uh, in the in the supply chain itself or uh, in head office. 
Um, so we have a lot of, uh, yeah, we have a lot of vacancies. Okay. And also uh, we have uh, uh, vacancies for, uh, as you want, if you want to earn a little bit more as a student, we have vacancies for uh, uh, um, runners. So our delivery uh, boys and girls. Uh, so you can drive the same van you saw in the vehicle uh, or in the, in the, in the video uh, and uh, make our customers very happy. Right. Nice. Good to hear. Um, yeah, you heard it. You can always go to the website for any uh, job applications. Um, for now, I guess this is uh, it for us. I want to thank uh, Thomas uh, once again for uh, both the video and uh, today, uh, the, the live session. I want to thank you all for, uh, for joining this uh, yeah, last 45 minutes. Um, I want to wish you uh, the, the rest of the uh, week and weekend, a nice weekend already. Um, yeah, and uh, maybe till, uh, till the second edition. Thank you very much. And a compliments to, uh, to the nice uh, video and uh, all the editing and also to Stan uh, for his interview. Yeah, lucky, I really enjoyed you know, it. Unlucky he couldn't be here. He had a, he had a busy schedule, but uh, I, will, I will send your regards to him. Great. All right. Thanks a lot, Ron.